Genius Brain listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Fume. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor. We are talking about our sponsor, Fume. And they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Stopping is something we all can put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers, has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code genius to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code genius to save an additional 10% off your order today. Genius Brain listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile's best offer of the year is here for a limited time. Buy any three-month plan and get three more months for free. By going online and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and ever sleep with eSIM. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash genius15. That's mintmobile.com slash genius15. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash genius15. Uh, it was like if if men and women were given a choice, if they if they found a partner that, that uh, had 80% of what they wanted, would you accept that? The guys of this poll, this was a poll. In five Four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. I am your host, David. So still in my Hawaii outfit because we shoot two episodes a day yes. and we don't ever change it. We have Emmanuel from Dorm Payment, I baby. I haven't changed in three days, baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking go, Let's dude. Go. Let me ask you something. Mm. And I always want, and don't take this the fucking wrong way. Okay. All right. Ahead. When did you start balling? Because I'm always see. This is why I want to ask you this, right? Okay. I feel like for a guy, mm -hmm. having your hair is so fucking important, right? It fucks okay. with your self esteem. Mm -hmm. If so, I had a buddy in college that started balding when he was eighteen. <laughs> so just show it now. Can't hide anymore. He started balding when he was eighteen. Yeah, same hair. Really? Uh, younger, seventeen. Uh, I was in high school. Is it a family thing? Like a genetic thing? Definitely. I was lucky enough to have my father in my life, so I knew who he was and the hair uh, issue that he shared. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, when I, was, when I was younger, I had a beautiful head of hair. I had waves. Beautiful <laughs> waves. It's like a reminiscing right now. Silky <laughs> waves. Um, and then as I started, uh, I remember it was high school. Like, I, I was playing football around that time, and I remember just... Rubbing my head, in it, the feeling is the first thing that you notice. Oh. It feels thin. It, it's not so much that you look in the mirror and you can see anything, but you kind of feel over your head. It's like, this feel, why does it feel? I can feel my head. <laughs> yeah. But I don't see a difference yet, but I just feel it. And I just remember, you know, you start brushing your hair a little more and you start seeing follicles falling out. And uh, the guys say that when I got to college, I had a full head of hair, but I really didn't. I was going through that whole issue then. So I kind of, it kind of grows you up a little bit, to be honest with you. You just got to let like it a, go. It's like a slow death. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, and I had to choose the life that I wanted to live because as a balding man, you're going to either have the cul-de-sac, you know, people call it the cul-de-sac. <laughs> the George Jefferson. The George Jefferson, right? <laughs> And I couldn't at 17, 18, 19, 20 years old have the George Jefferson. That wasn't going to happen. So I made a decision. I'm just going to shave my head and I'm just going to see whatever happens, happens. And, uh, you know, my friends told me, hey, you have the head for it. And I didn't, you know, growing up, knowing that my dad was bald, knowing that Michael Jordan was bald, knowing that Tupac was bald, Mike Tyson, all these. There was a lot of bald brothers out there that all I, and I, most importantly, I knew they got the pussy I mean, <laughs> you know i knew they were gonna, you had like, heroes to look up yes to. i had heroes to look up to so i wasn't like oh i'm the, too nervous but it was still like damn i don't have that thing i once had i had yeah, to yeah, deal yeah, with yeah. something with losing something that was a part of me that was but attached dude, you had it super young though yeah I mean, it's not even things that you could prepare for because as a 17 right. year old you're not thinking you're gonna go bald yeah no 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 not not that young you're not thinking you're gonna see the you know, the beginning stages of it. 
and then you got years of dealing with that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. are you going to start doing drops or some shit, taking pills, all this bullshit? Listen, and I, I was like, I didn't want to go through all that. I, I did try the drops. I tried the. Would you do like you know, finasteride and minoxidil or something? Yes, yeah. one of those. And uh, I tried the drops for a while. I probably didn't stick to it long enough, to be honest with you. I was just like, I'm not going to do so. I don't want to add something to my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, it's already hard enough to focus on brushing teeth and flossing every single day. To incorporate minoxidil, whatever it's called, into my head, I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing all that shit. And so I just committed. I was like, I'm going to shave the head bald. Did that like fuck with your like self-esteem for a little bit? Or were you just kind of, I accept this, fuck it. Because sometimes when I see dudes, listen, one of my boys, <coughs> my best friend, this guy is fucking ruthless. Yeah. We had a buddy of mine who was going bald, and my buddy was also going bald early right. on, so he decided to shave. Let me tell you something. If you ever wanted, if you if you ever went bald, black is the way to be. <laughs> bald black people just so look So if bright. you go bald, make sure you go black. black. That's right. <laughs> you better fucking Rachel Dolls all that shit mm -hmm. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep, trans race. You see me go man. bald, suddenly I get darker. <laughs> it's like, yo, Dave, you're chill, bro. <laughs> it's like, I feel like, like you said, yeah. there's already people in the black community who are affluent, yeah. that are powerful, that are bald. Yeah, and it already common, looks good. Yeah. If I go bald, people oh, immediately assume I'm a monk. That's it. <laughs> I have no other path. I have no other fucking path. Is there any famous bald Asian man? Who Who is the, like... Gandhi. <laughs> That's about it. That's all we got. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Nobody else. Gandhi. <laughs> There's no sexy bald Asian dude. We don't really got that. Like Damn. Asian people love hair. Like that's like yeah, their thing. Yeah, that's 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 the part that's yeah. When I when I started like losing mm. hair a little bit, it was I started losing hair because I was just fucking up my head. I didn't know. I was yeah. shampoo like twice a day and I was oh, ripping out my hair. I didn't know that was a bad thing. <laughs> and then it, it started growing. What back. age was when was this? This was like six, seven years ago. Okay, okay. And then I started noticing my hair was super thinning. And I'm like and I've already had very thin or fine hair. So yeah. I, it's never been that thick. Right. I've always had fine hair. But then I started seeing my hair come out. I'm like Oh shit! Mm. I gotta get buff now. Mm. <laughs> I, I got like, it. I the, gotta oh, fight. <laughs> that's the only thing I can think about. I was yeah. like, "Oh, I can't be fat anymore." Right, right. Because now I'm Buddha. <laughs> so this is like the only like if you if as an Asian Damn. person if I lose all my hair I have to be buff. I have nothing else now. Yeah, there there is no other way around it. There's no other way around it. And then I, I just have... like found out it was like, "Oh, you're shampooing too much," and then my hair grew back. I was like, "Oh, okay." That's I gotta good. just chill okay. off of that stuff. And yeah, I always go yeah. to my barber. I'm like, "Hey, don't you fucking hurt me. <laughs> you tell me the moment you see." balding you let me know Damn. so i could figure out what to do with this shit and, and are you guys ruthless with each other like for for koreans or like oh asian people in general are just ruthless and like my mom too let me tell you so at the wedding right yeah my dad calls me up a few days before because he's supposed to do a speech yeah and he calls me up and he goes hey how much did you weigh at your highest just out of nowhere and i go why are you asking that he goes, just <laughs> on your wedding day this is three days before the wedding That's hilarious. Like, oh, just let me know and then during the wedding day he mm -hmm. starts doing his speech and he was like my son i remember he got so fat he was 290 pounds like that's why you asked <laughs> <laughs> you asked for the fucking speech that's, that's why you fucking asked yo and he says this shit in korean he goes i saw him walk up to me from a distance and i thought he was a walrus dog <laughs> and i'm sitting here like yo what the fuck guy give me the fucking mic and he's just roasting me <laughs> I, I told my dad Add something the other or this was like a couple months back i was i broke up with an ex of mine so and i was telling my dad my mom's coming into town she was flying into town and i was telling my dad yeah we're not together but i don't want to tell mom until she gets here and i'll, I'll just break it to her because they knew each other and stuff mm -hmm. and um two days like like the next day before my mom even ar arrives in town, my mom calls me. She's like, hey, I heard you and your girl broke up. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I kind of told dad to hold off on telling you because I don't want to talk over the phone about it. And he was like, well, he, he he told me, yeah, you know, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. And so she skipped past it. But the next day she calls back again. And it's like, hey, I just want to apologize. I shouldn't have told you that. Now your dad's mad that I told you before <laughs> I was supposed to keep that. Yeah. She was like, but we tell each other everything. It's, and it was so interesting to see the dynamic of like, oh, y'all like, uh, it's, it's, y'all are human. You're just, you're just. Can I tell you something? Parents can't keep a secret to save their worth fucking shit. life. Worth uh, shit. Let me tell you this shit. When I was in high school, right, I got dumped by my very first girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And of course, as a young guy, I'm crying. I'm crying because mm -hmm. I just got dumped by the mm -hmm. love of my life, right? I'm in my room, 
And then my mom comes in. And first of all, this woman has, this woman is stone cold as fuck. Like mm. I'm, I'm translated into English. She just, I'm crying. I'm in my bed. I'm on my bed, sitting at the edge of my bed. And I'm crying. I'm wiping my tears. My mom opens the door. She sees her son crying. She sits down next to me, puts her hand over my shoulder. And she goes, only little bitches cry by themselves in their room. <laughs> and then she just gets up and she leaves and closes the door. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I get her. I'm like, hey. Can you just not tell dad that I got dumped? Like, I'm not, just don't do that. She goes, of course I won't. Fucking, f I, maybe five seconds later, my yeah. dad comes in. She goes, he goes, you got dumped? I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? Can't hold the secret word. What shit. the fuck? And I was so Yo. fucking pissed. And she has been known to never be able to hold secrets. Oh there was something else that happened. It was between like me and my brother. And, yeah. and something happened with my brother. And I told my mom not to tell our dad because uh -huh. my brother and my dad butt heads a lot. Mm hmm. Next thing you know, my brother calls me. She goes, did you tell mom? And I was like, hold on one second. And I call my mom. <laughs> and I'm fucking heated. This is this is like two years ago. Yeah. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Oh, my. Why can you not keep a promise? And I literally asked her this in Korean. I was like, are you going to fucking die if you hold a secret? And she goes, yes! <laughs> I, I will die! <laughs> she goes, I can't do it! Don't tell me anything! No. I'm like, dude. She had to come to Jesus moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I can't hold, like uh, more women just need to admit that. Because they, like, honestly, it's like none of them can hold the secret. She yeah. cannot. I've never seen my mom. I was like, dude, you literally, it's like if I, if I committed a crime, mm -hmm. you would turn me in in a second. You can't hold a secret at all. Like I'm fucked. I'm done for, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's who my mom is. Mm. She's fucking wild, dude. Yeah. But like, you know. Th is that she on the phone? Is she like a gops gossip queen? Like on the phone with she doesn't family really, and stuff? I, she probably doesn't really gossip like that per se, but within the family, she does say stuff. Yeah, yeah, people. yeah. Other yeah. people outside her family don't know shit, but then our family knows everything, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So she kind of keeps, that's her rule. It's like right. family can know everything. Everybody outside can fuck off, mm -hmm, you know? So she kind of keeps it within that circle, yeah. which I understand too. Right, like my, right. my rule too is, and I think that a lot of people don't understand this. It's like, let's say we got a whole group of friends, right? I'm allowed to talk shit about the person within the friend group with the other people within this friend group. Friend group, group yeah. Right? Yep. Anybody else says shit about anybody else in my friend group, that's, you can get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, that's 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 the ultimate x man because it's like you're bringing, why, why are you bringing other people into it? Like, if, if we go out and I just hear somebody say, hey, I heard you you got dumped yesterday, but, like, why are you? <laughs> yeah, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah, like, why are you, you know? I heard you've been masturbating every day. <laughs> like, why did you know this? This was supposed to be. God damn. I heard you still listen to R. Kelly, dude. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, but you know, a lot of people don't know that fucking rule. And I found out, like, moving into this city, yeah. like, I don't know, maybe it's because I grew up in such a, like, tight knit community. Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of kept shit here. Yes. And so. I found out that not everybody follows those rules. Mm -hmm. And there was like a specific girl that I used to work with. <laughs> and she would, we would have like issues within our group that we would solve and hash out. Well, during the time that we're solving this shit, this girl was like tell, talking Telling our everybody. personal shit to everybody else when it wasn't solved yet. Right. It's like, we could solve this within family and it's not even a big deal. Mm -hmm. But the way that she would go out and tell other people our personal business, mm -hmm. it would always come back to us. Cause they would be like, hey, like we heard, I'm like, how did you hear about that? Right. And they were like, well, this is what they're saying. And I was like, well, did you hear the full story? And they go, that makes more sense. And I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, but obviously those people are the ones that you have to like cut right. the fuck out, right? Yeah, yeah, and let me tell you, you in the last five years, there's been a lot of cutting people though. Yeah, yeah. Fuck out, dude. I mean, honestly, they're snitches. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. They're yeah. snitches. They're, they're, they're the, the urban, I mean, the uh, suburban version of snitches. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're telling on your friends and like spreading stuff around it's just like yo that's not what a friend would do you know keep things to your chest if i tell you something you know in in secret a lot of people like to do this shit it's like it's called like trauma bonding where they'll fucking uh, oh yeah yeah they'll yeah. connect with somebody by talking shit and about that's the, another person mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. all they do and then when that enemy dies they don't have a friendship anymore yeah, right right and they turn on each other and it's you'll see crazy. that happen all the time. Ugh, ugh, I, I fucking like hate that, that shit. shit. No. Nah. Yeah. That shit away from me. And like if, what I explain to people too is like, well, why is it okay for you to tell complaints about your other friend within the group? It's because we all know this motherfucker. Yeah. Right. right. And then we could talk about it with that person later after right. you hash it out with this person to talk your thoughts right. to because we know this person. That's the best way to handle shit. Yeah. You're getting advice from your friends, the people closest to you that know, okay, they know this person and you. So. Yeah, it's like, hey, bro, it's like, listen, I know my girl's on OnlyFans, but I need you to fucking unsubscribe. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, like you've been fucking jacking off to my fucking girlfriend for the last year. Right. And I don't like it. 
<laughs> Rome asked me this question one time that I think kind of relates, but it's more about family. Like, let's say I introduce you to a family member of mine. Mm-hmm. Okay? You come over one day or something to the house, and y'all end up getting along really good. We're at a point where you exchange numbers, and you, you start developing your own relationship. But me and you fall off now. Mm. How do you handle that? Do you stay in touch with, let's say this is my brother, cousin, sister, some, something you know along those lines. Or do you just step away? I'll give you my answer. After. Okay. Go ahead. For me, I've never had to deal with that shit mm-hmm. because I'm always loyal to the source. I'm always loyal to the source. Yes. Because. That's a great way to put it. I, it's like that with divorces. Yeah. Right? If I came in. Let's say you have a wife, right? Mm-hmm. I got really close with your wife because we started doing mm-hmm. couple shit and right, all this right, other right. stuff. But then something bad happened between you guys. Something sour. Mm-hmm. And y'all split. I'm not her friend anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You are my acquaintance through a manual. Yep. You might be a great person. And how I look at it like this, they go, why is that fair? But listen, you're not going to die if I'm not your friend. Yeah. You you literally will not die. Right. If there was something so important to the part where your life was wrecked, Mm -hmm. then maybe it might be a different situation, right? right? right. But people are able to move on, and you don't need me in your life. What we had was great, but I'm connected to this person, and my loyalty lies with the person first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it has to be like that. Because when it starts being funny, and because then that's it does feel at least like a betrayal on the other side. If I'm not talking to this person but you're a friend of mine and you're still hanging out with that person. I don't know. It's a weird thing. Yeah, I don't even like talk to exes or anything. You know yeah, I mean? oh, me neither. I'm, I'm <laughs> exes. I move forward. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that whole backstepping and like going, going to talk it's to too, them again. It's too it's complicated. Like too complicated. I, I just can't do it because I, I saw you naked and my dick was in your mouth. Yeah. And that's and all. I'm never going to get that image out of Exactly. It's just all I see. It's yeah, like, oh, like, shit. Hey, you know, you were, you were one of mine and... Look, I look to each their own, right? Yeah. You can handle your personal relations however you want. But I'm just saying for me, it's, it's just really difficult because we connected on an emotional level in a way that I don't with other people. Yes. So what we had was what we had. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not in your life, it would make your life easier to, for me not to be there. Yeah. You don't have to do all these mental gymnastics. You don't have to do any of that shit. Right, right. Start your own life. Start, if we see each other, it's cordial. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Shake hands, move on, whatever the fuck. Maybe even give you the one-arm hug right here. Yeah, yeah. And then we just move the fuck on. The best situation could be for that girl to possibly just move out the city. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought no you were say, the best thing for her is for her to get into a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> if she's dead, the better. All right. No. Or like a Korean drama, she just forgets you from amnesia. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I have no idea who the fuck you are. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that yeah, that's a weird situation to have. Yeah, but I, friends and like stuff. loyalty is very important to me right like I've 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 kept friendships for a very very long time mm-hmm. I have the same friends that I had since I was 14 2 3 4 5 nice we still talk to each other till right. this fucking day right half that wedding was from friends from Sacramento and the other half was friends that uh were from LA even though it was like a 70 person wedding mm-hmm. like I had to make these choices and there were people who I've known since I was a kid mm-hmm. and we're, we're still friends we still do very different fucking things but one of the things that's tried and true is that they've always allowed me to be myself they're always allowed to be their selves and even if we don't have the same career paths we still have so many things to talk about and right. there's no jealousy right mm-hmm. whenever i see my friend succeed i'm like that's fucking dope yes when we yeah. when we see this when we have this thing where sometimes when they people see people win and they go well, how come that's not me oh uh, it's like you shouldn't even be thinking that you yeah. should be thinking damn that's fucking dope that's now. a demon yo yo 100 percent. when that seeps into your brain and you start that jealousy that envy from your own to your own friends to your own family and stuff like that that is a demon seeping into your spirit that you need to get the fuck out because it's like why live like that though? yeah man i mean because it's 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 your own self-hate or something you're, yeah. you're not you're not happy where you're at in life you're not happy with what's going on around you and now it's like fuck Cause, man cause i don't like the like, person what's the end result to that Right, like, does that make you feel better? It probably doesn't, right? You're just kind of no. sitting and stewing in your own thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you see other people succeed, and they're doing really well, you should take that either as a motivation or happiness that your friends are doing really well. Right, right. Because if you're sitting there, like when I see other people do really well, right, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh shit, that's fucking dope. I gotta get on my own shit. Too. Yes, yeah. It's not a comparison game. Right. It's just a reality check of like, oh, step your shit up. Right, right, right. You know. And then look, if it doesn't happen that way, it doesn't fucking happen that way. But 
their mo- majority of my friends are financially way better than me. Yes. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. They're all way financially better mm-hmm. than me, but it doesn't make me feel a certain way. Right, right. right? Definitely when we go out to eat, I don't pick up the bill. Right, right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> they damn well know they better pick yeah, up the bill. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah you have yeah. millions of dollars. You want me to pay for this right, shit? Yeah, yeah, I ain't pay for shit. You know, and they know it too. Right, right. They don't shove it in my face. Right. Like when the bill comes around, I just go, <laughs> and I slide it over like I'm the bad bitch. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I have an OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> you sucking on them clams. Did you, you see that video? Uh, the girl doing a whole... She she ordered like she went on her first date. Genius Brain listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Fume. My friends, cutting a habit out cold turkey is really, really difficult. But have you heard about Fume? We're talking about Fume, baby. They look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit you get it my friends instead of bad fume is good it's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting giving your fingers a lot to do uh, which is helpful for distressing and anxiety while breaking your habit wow it's super perfectly weighted it's extremely fun to fidget with and guess what you're breathing in such amazing amazing stuff like think of, of a refreshing herbal tea it's honestly tasty I enjoy it very much. I use it in the car when I'm driving a lot. So my friend, stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code Genius to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code Genius to save an additional 10% off your order today. With a whole bunch of... uh... She went on a first date. The guy didn't show up yet, and she started ordering a bunch of clams. Clams or, yeah, I think it was clams. Yeah. And she's like, ooh, he didn't show up, so I started buying these clams. And it's like rose. I think she ordered 45 on total. It was like, God like, damn. Like, and the guy showed up, and he ended up just dipping on the date. Like, he said he was going to the bathroom and just left. Yeah, because he thought his date was an otter. And he said, I invited you for drinks. Yeah, <laughs> and you expect me to pay for all this? And she's just like, and the the sound she made in Disgusting. the video was just. Mm-mm. You know what? Let me ask you this, because this has been a huge thing that I've been seeing online a mm-hmm. lot. It's like all these like random street interviews where they're asking these girls what I've they expect this. men to make or what. Yeah, they yeah, do. yeah, yeah. And I almost don't know if they're joking or not, because That's the expectations joke. were ridiculous. There was yeah. this girl, this Australian girl, mm-hmm. right? She might as well be very cute right. to each their own, right? To me, not so much, okay. mainly because of her personality. But she was sitting there, and, and she was she sounded like she was a little drunk, but I wasn't sure if she was joking or not. But from the comments, it seems like they're like, no, she was actually serious because they were asking how much should a guy make if they want She goes, $500,000 at least, right? And if you can't afford that, then don't even fucking ask. And I was like, "Is are you serious? Like, in what... You want him to be like the top percenter? Yeah. What one percent? And then what makes you think that that one percenter is going to go for you? Yeah. This random girl on the street screaming her fucking head <laughs> off. Like, what? Are, what are you thinking about? And then you read the comments and people be fucking going roasting in right on her, dude. They were like, she. They need to make half a million because she needs to eat. And they were just like, fucking go in. God <laughs> damn. That shit hurt my fucking feelings, dog. <laughs> They said he's going to have to buy whales yeah. to feed this bitch. But I, I just feel like, you know, I, I've seen compilations of those. Yeah. Of just women saying these ridiculous prices. I'm like, yo, am I not, am I doing that bad? <laughs> Is this the norm for guys now? Yeah. He's 200, he has to make at least 300,000, 500,000 a mil. I'm like. 50K ring. Right. We have to be on a yacht. We have to be. My- I heard this one girl say, oh, I want this such and such type of ring. And the uh, uh, the interviewer asked her, oh, uh, what type of ring is that? How she was like, oh, it's a $250,000 ring. And I'm like, $250,000 ring. I mean, that's crazy because you as a human thought we're $250,000. Right. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, what in the world are you talking about? Yeah, right. Have you seen how much slaves go for? <laughs> in, like... <laughs> It is nothing. <laughs> it's fucking two goats. You're right. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh my god. So I don't know where these. Uh, again, I feel like we're living in an eighties movie. There's, this was one video that I saw that it was really funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure if it was supposed to be funny, but I find humor in everything. But she was talking about <coughs> how much a, a a guy should put down on a first date, mm. and it, she said that a minimum of three hundred dollars or something around that ballpark for a first fucking date. Are you? 
out? Where the fuck are you going that you're spending, dropping three bills? By the way, on her. David. Not on you and her together. Right, right. Just on her. I'm married. I would not spend $300 on my wife on a date. There's yes. no fucking way. We went to Disneyland because yeah. she worked at Disneyland. The tickets were free. Yeah. And then I brought food into the park. Are you insane? Yes, yes, yes. Listen. No fucking way. I don't I don't know what's happened, man. I mean, I, I remember like women when I was younger, like as a kid, that women, you know, family, but also like outside, like friends and, and, and other people's parents, maybe they'd be like coupon getters. And yeah, 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 yeah. Like cut up coupons. And I love like, that oh, shit. Get a good, good deal. That shit turns me on when I see a woman doing that now. Hey, hey, <laughs> if you a lady out there, you on Facebook Marketplace, what's what? up? What? Well, you want to fucking oh offer up? God, offer up? <laughs> Looking for them good discounts? <laughs> Gets excited when she finds Hell a good yeah. discount? Oh my God. We're about to her- buy a plane ticket. She goes, that's full price. We'll wait. Oh my my That's Jesus, the type of woman man. that you yeah, need. Man. But now, just seeing all these videos, is just, I, I don't know what's going on. And I think it's just Instagram. and uh, like, it's, it's Instagram, social media, and people seeing each other on, these girls see each other on yachts. It's like, you deserve crap. more. Yeah, and it's more and more and more. It's like, it's but like y'all are work. getting away from reality. Mm-hmm. <laughs> reality is not this living in opulence. Because look, you know I'll, say, I'll even put it like this. No matter what a girl looks like, Right, mm. that is just not happening. Right, right, and honestly, I just don't value things like that. Right, I value great conversation, time, mm-hmm. your mind. Yes. You, could, you know, like this connection type of thing. But for her, she's like, so this girl, this you know, this specific person was, yeah. and this guy was kind of asking her, like, hey, why do you feel like you're worth that much just on a single meal? Right, or when you guys go out, she goes, well. Okay, let's break it down. I spent fifty dollars for my makeup, for my serum, blah blah blah. So I spent about like a thousand dollars on my serum. But he goes, "Who was that Excuse for?" Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, and he asks, "Well, who was that for?" She goes, "It's for me." And then he's like, "Well, then how does that equate to what do you talk? If it's for you, she goes, "Well, I look this good." But it's like at the other hand, you don't think he's trying to look good too? You, you don't right, right. You know he just he just left work and just came straight here. Said, and here's Fuck. the here's the bigger question that I have for that right too. Right, it's like okay. If I asked you from an outside context, outside of dating, I'm mm-hmm. like, why do you put on makeup? You do it for men, don't you? They're just like, how dare you? Yeah, yeah. They, they won't even say oh. that. No, I do it for myself. Yeah, how dare you? I would never. I only do it for myself. But you just told me you do it for him. If so, you do it for yourself, I don't understand. Why aren't, like, gay girl clubs, like, the biggest thing ever? <laughs> like, right? Just all girl clubs. Y'all can just go look f- f- nice for each other and, you know, dance, <laughs> yeah, work, yeah. all that shit by yourself. <laughs> Up there while I get to be at home and play video games. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, live the real life we want to live. And look, I agree. There are times that we, you know, do ourselves up because we want to feel good. But we feel good because other people recognize that we look good. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's there's okay. nothing wrong with that. I don't nothing understand why that's that. such a, a, like, a vilified thing. Yeah, but to, to not admit it, just to not see, like, you know, you ask most guys, oh, why, why, you know, why you get a certain car or something like that, it'd probably be the bitches, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what end up saying but for girls it just seem a lot of these women online especially just seem to be like yo i don't know women like i do it life. for myself honestly it's you know what i do see it rubbing off on women i know Mm-mm-mm-mm. okay i see certain behaviors that it's like oh that's like i remember i told uh uh one of my homegirls one time like she was you know talking about relationship stuff and i said uh yeah man I, guys don't want a lot we, we really like there was a study that came out and said that uh, uh, it was like if if men and women were given a choice, if they if they found a partner that that uh, had 80 percent of what they wanted, would you accept that? The guys of this poll, this was a poll. Percent. They said, absolutely. 80 percent. Holy shit. 80 that percent. Cool. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's a great bit rate. The women in the poll said no. no. They Why? said I would be settling for eighty percent. For eighty percent, my dude, eighty percent. Think about that. Eighty percent is so high. That is so high. Eighty. I get eighty percent of what I want out of a human. Hey, let me in tell you, you something. Like that's a that's so, amazing. 
Let me tell you something. My wife, she definitely settled. She, <laughs> right. She definitely got about, I would say she got roughly maybe 22% of what she wanted out of a man. Right? And then I've been, over time, been able to give her the other like, 30 little, or 40%. Right, right, right. When I started, it was like 20%. Right. And then we've, I've been molding myself and becoming a better man That's you awesome. know, along the way. So I definitely found a keeper. But that I, unreal. 80% is considered settling? It's, it's considered settling. So when I hear these things, I'm just like, what is happening? And that's why I feel good when I see a situation like you where you're married, you know, because in, a, in, our, in this industry and stuff, you don't see a lot of, especially our generation, okay? The younger guys that came off of the internet and stuff, to you know, have a marriage, mm -hmm. to, to start having kids and family, it's like a lot of us are stuck in a situation where it seems like uh, you can't grow up for, for some people, you know what I'm saying? Next it's year harder. with me and my lady, that's, that's going to be our 10th year together. Man. And time goes by fast. Congratulations. Bro. Right? And with her too, it's like I've never – when I met her, I wasn't planning to settle down. Mm -hmm. But I really do feel like, listen, when God gives you opportunities, you just take it. Right, right. right? And when I met her, she had something about her. I don't know exactly what the fuck it was, mm -hmm. but – I just thought that I could spend the rest of my life with her. And I pursued it and something happened. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that within these 10 years, we didn't have massive fights. Mm -hmm. We didn't have massive differences. And I've even talked about this before we actually got engaged. I basically almost left her because we just weren't working out. Right. And, but, and look, it's not to say that marriages are always going to be fighting and all the time. Right. But because of these like fights that we had and we'd be able to fix these problems that we have with each other, we became better for it. A lot of the times I feel like a lot of people expect instant gratuity all the time. Right. It's like, you know, you know, the mother and father that you had that you grew up in the household, you don't think that they fought for what they had. Oh my God. And yeah. then you look at them and you go, they have the perfect relationship. Well, guess what? That shit took time. Yeah. It wasn't like that when they were younger. Mm -hmm. You you guys forget like your your parents were once young, in love, teens. T young 20s 30s or whatever they were, they were fucking they were, they were fucking they, your dad was shoving oh that oh my thing. god so far up that, <laughs> that hole that brown hole <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? your mom has only fans and you just oh didn't know god. about it <laughs> you're right, yeah. right. but yeah. like you know for us she never expected me to be at 100% of everything that she yeah. wanted. And I always say this too, when, whenever you anybody wants like a solid relationship, by the way, when I say solid, I'm not talking about externally solid. We're not talking about the Smiths, right? Yeah, We're right, talking right, about right. what goes on in the household. Mm -hmm. there are, you need to have these things I call pillars. I don't know if anybody else has this stuff too, right? Okay. The pillars are the, the, the strong foundation that keeps the building up. Mm -hmm. As long as those things don't move, mm -hmm. everything else doesn't fucking matter. We'll figure it out. Gotcha. Right? Is so, there a specific? Specificity, family, religion. Uh, fam my thing is like family, uh, religion, communication, and then trust. Those are the four things, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't lie to me, right? Communicate how you feel. Mm -hmm. Family is always important, and that's family, including close friends, mm -hmm. right? I consider close friends family as well, too. Yeah, yeah. And then religiously, we have to be on the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just because like it's just everything. And then number five, make me a sandwich. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually the one making sandwiches yeah. in the house. There you go. It could go either way. Yeah, you know I am saying? never eating anything she makes. That girl can't cook to save her oh. fucking life. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, but everything else doesn't matter in mm -hmm, the sense mm -hmm. that those things can be addressed and those things can be fixed along the way. As long as I have these core things, right. to me, that's the 100%, mm -hmm. right? What everybody else considers, like, when they, oh, has to be handsome and needs all this other shit. Right. You would be so surprised how much you don't give a fuck about that shit I, yeah. when you're in year three, year four, five, six, right. seven, eight of the relationship. Right. Not to saying that putting your effort, trying and looking your best doesn't fucking matter. But in the list of things that are important, mm -hmm. those things go down. Yeah. Because people are forgetting there is a categorical way to develop a relationship. It's actually a, a psychology thing. Mm -hmm. You're confusing lust and love. Those are two yes. different yes. things. You can lust after a lot of things. You yeah. can even lust after inanimate objects if you wanted to, right? right? right. But love is a very, very different thing. Right. And it takes time to develop that shit. It's almost like this person becomes a part of you that you literally can mm -hmm. leave. And so when I decided to marry my wife was like, hey, I actually feel like you and I are one, Yeah, you know? How you feel hurts me. Not not to make it island boyish, but it, did you feel like you become brother and sister in a way? Does that does is it, is that too weird? No, 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 no. Like, I see what you're saying. I'd say like it's it's pretty much along the lines of we have an ebb and flow now. Right, right, right. right. There's 
unsaid communication. Okay. When you get to that level of your relationship, mm-hmm. that's when shit's the best. Okay. You don't need to ask somebody to fill in the holes that need to be filled. I'm not talking about fucking. I'm talking about just like the stuff that you suck at. <laughs> right. You know, right, right. they still not talking about fucking. Yeah, we're still. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm talking about her sucking my dick. No, um, like if I'm inadequate at this stuff, mm-hmm. she doesn't need to tell me I'm inadequate at it. She fulfills this role that she knows that I cannot do right. without asking it of me and not making me feel like I'm not inferior. inferior. It's exactly. Right. So she knows I can't organize things. So when right. we go on trips, she schedules things out. That's her fucking priority. Nice. I make sure she doesn't get kidnapped in it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I cover the costs. Yeah, I book the hotels. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Right, and right, I right. make sure that things aren't stressful for her. I pick up the bags. I do all like this manual labor type of stuff. Has there ever been in a part of your relationship where it felt like... um? Maybe she's taking over. I apologize. My, no, it's okay. Oh, that happens. I, I thought it was mine. Yeah, no, it's mine. But uh, where it feels like maybe she's taking a role she doesn't need to be or you're taking a role you don't need to be? Yeah, for sure. The, is that where? That's where we some, have arguments. But, okay. Right? Gotcha. So, for example, like, <laughs> I just told you this. Mm-hmm. So, my wife sprained her ankle uh, right. uh, this morning. And then sometimes, you know, I'm a dumbass. So, I see her. She's hobbling and she's on the floor. And then, you know... I have this thing when I'm fixated on something that I want to do, I, it has to get done or it fucking eats me up inside. Mm-hmm. And the whole day I wanted to go into the hot tub, mm-hmm. you know? And so I see her, she's hobbled on the floor. And the first thing I say to her, I was like, how bad is it? <laughs> and she goes, well, she goes, well, I'm on the floor. I was like, so are you still going to be there if I'm at the hot tub for 20 minutes? Oh my God. And let dog. me tell you something. It was a cold <laughs> ass night. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was a cold ass night. Oh my God. I felt God. the breeze in the room and all the windows were closed. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> shit, shit was a, a rough fucking night. And I just sat there. I was like, and she just goes, she just looks at me. She goes, you're useless. <laughs> And I sat there, I was like, damn, I'm kind of useless. Why did I do that? <laughs> it's because I just had to go to the hot tub. Right, right. But then I kind of mitigated everything else because I literally put her on my back. I carried her up the stairs. Right, this right. morning, I made her breakfast. Right. I got her her drinks. I got her her snacks. Right. I asked her if she needed something. Yeah. I usually do a five-mile walk. I canceled that. I came over to check on her before the podcast, yeah. and then she felt loved. But that's like that's the awesome. thing, too, is like also knowing when you fuck up and then not trying to fight to win an argument. Right, right, right. That's like young people early shit. Yes. Where I you're know. just only trying to be right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Fuck being right. Mm-hmm. The objective of this is for you guys both to be happy. Genius Brain listeners, give yourself the gift of insane savings this holiday season with Mint Mobile's best wireless deal of the year. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy a three month plan, you'll get another three months for free. That's six months of premium wireless service for the price of three mint mobile lets you order and activate from home while saving tons on phone plans starting at just 15 dollars a month seriously i can't think of a better gift than turning an overpriced wireless bill into just 15 dollars a month with mint mobile with all those savings my friends man you know the economy be crazy lately so guess what you can buy with all that extra money that you saved a cup of coffee here and there a meal here and there some lunch some dinner impress your lady with the savings that you got and let me tell you something my lady loves savings when i tell her i save some money ooh, that gets her all hot and bothered so what are you doing your lady's staying cold you need to save with mint mobile for a limited time buy any three month mint mobile plan and get three more months free by going to mintmobile.com slash genius 15 that's mintmobile.com slash genius 15 cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash genius 15 right so what are you trying to accomplish and like i always and by the way i'm not saying i do this all the time Mm -hmm. a lot of the times we're trying to be right but then in the fight we realize oh we're both unhappy what can we do next time to make sure this doesn't happen? It will happen again, uh-huh. but it, the fights get shorter and shorter now. Right, right. Because so bef- you have an understanding now. Before, Better. when we would fight about this mm-hmm. stuff, it would be a two-hour conversation. Right. Now, it's five minutes, right? She looks at me and she goes, you're fucking useless. Like, <laughs> right. Pretty useless, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, That's why awesome, do I do that? That's awesome, man. I, I, I hope you know one day have that chemistry. To, 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 and I know it takes work with the person. You know, It takes... To get to that point, it's almost like it's almost like two algorithms trying to work together, to, and you got to figure out that coding. You know what I mean? Like you know, when, you know when those stand-up comics they go up and they talk about the difference between men and women. I understand now. Mm-hmm. They we're so different. So, yeah, 
We're yeah. so fucking different. Yeah. And somehow God just made us this way. And I get mad at him sometimes. I'm yeah. like, why, you do this, <laughs> why you do What's this? up, man? Why you do this? Why you, why you do that, bro? Why, do why is it like this? Can like, you choose the other rib? <laughs> yeah, I know. Side. Maybe the left rib or the right yeah, rib, yeah. you made the wrong choice. <laughs> I know God doesn't make mistakes, but maybe this time You're you right. did. <laughs> but we, you know, uh. like getting to know her over the you know past years, like she also got to know me like. We grew up so differently. Right. You know, I grew up in Sacramento, California, in a not nice neighborhood. I did a lot of bad things mm-hmm. as a young person, you know, selling drugs to s- small children. <laughs> and for her, she grew up in a very protected community. Okay. And one of the fights that we got into was like how I would express my anger mm-hmm. and how we would express anger in my household was chaotic. Mm-hmm, Busting mm-hmm. shit, breaking down doors, fucking screaming at each other. Right, right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She didn't grow up with that. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if other people feel this way in their relationship too. They go, well, if things went bad between you, what makes it hard for you to divorce her? It's like, mm-hmm. probably for me, the most difficult thing is not the fact that I'm going to be a divorcee. It's the fact that there are so many good things about me as a human now that happened because of her. Mm. And I mm-hmm. give her credit for that. Right. So it's t- to walk away from this because we had a, a, an argument or we disagreed with something mm-hmm. would kind of erase all the great things that happened because I've been with her. So the amount that she's improved my life is here. Mm-hmm. The fights that we have is here. So right. what am I going to take? I'm mm. going to take the 80 and not the 20. Yes. yes. You know? So when well, they say well said. 80 and 20 is not good enough, mm-hmm. I'm like, you're going to be alone for the rest of your life. Rest of your life. And just be happy that way. Yes. But don't say that you want to be in a relationship. Right. Because if you expect perfection out of somebody else, you better expect perfection out of yourself. Right, right. Right? And that's the part that bothers me about that statement. Mm-hmm. Are you 100? Yeah. Are you that person's 100? Because exactly. if you think that you are, you're not. And nobody it, is. To not have the the, the, the wisdom or just the, just the common sense to know nobody's 100. Yeah. Nobody's 100. <laughs> Every single human being on earth is going to come with a flaw. Hey, you young people saying? think about this too, right? The the 100 that you see in the person that you want now, do you think that's going to be a sa- the same 20 years from now? Right. If your hundred within this category is this person's fine as fuck, guess what? In ten years they're gonna get old. Mm-hmm. Things are gonna sag. Things are gonna droop. Yes. And the fact that as you get older, they might not even be as smart as they were before. Yeah. Something might happen. They might have cancer. They might get sick. Are you gonna throw this person away because they are not that hundred that you expected them to be? How disgusting is that shit? Mm-hmm. You do not want a relationship. No. You want an object in your life that yeah. you get to parade around like they're a fucking piece of jewelry. Get a dog. Get a fucking dog. Get a dog. Yeah. Do Get what it. they, you know, put fucking fluff them up, get the yeah. pale pink and shit like that. Do Fuck all that shit. if you want to. All right, do that too. <laughs> all right. Whatever. Fuck it. <laughs> you know, if that's the relationship you want. You We're know. there now. All right, just do it. It's an episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> We're here, baby. We're here. Yeah, like, um, you know what's so funny, dude? I had this conversation the other day with a, with a homie of mine, and then he noticed this thing about me. He goes, "Hey, man, you don't you don't say the n word anymore, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Because in Sacramento, people still say yeah, it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, "Why'd you stop saying?" It? I was like, "Hey, listen, I miss it." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Every day, I miss it." There are certain situations where that yeah. word fits like a fucking yes, puzzle does, piece, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm not allowed to say it anymore, and it kills me. <laughs> You have no idea. It's, it's such a. It's it is a one of the greatest filler words of all time. Dog, um, people don't understand if they didn't grow up with it. Yeah, I feel a lot. I hear a lot of people use it because they want to use it. It's like you're not using it right though. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You can hear it doesn't flow off the. Tongue. When you when you see a dude out in the middle of the street, right, mm-hmm. and you see him acting like a fool, right, mm-hmm. and you just say this. <laughs> Right. And then <laughs> fills this gap, and there's yes. no other word that will fulfill what you meant at the time. Yeah, right? you're not thinking around guy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this man is crazy. He's, I, was, I was like, yeah, I miss it a fucking lot, dog. Right. I was like, but times have changed. That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. That is hilarious. And he was like, I yeah, you. Just, the N-word. <laughs> he was like, Maybe. he was like, you just never say it anymore. I was like, listen. <laughs> It slips out because, you know, you've been saying it since you were a little kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when you're, like, this is what I feel about black people. Y'all are so good at allowing people to come into the community and then you just don't know that you're in it until you're in it. In it, yeah, yeah, You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My biggest you thing was- You handed a plate of food. Yeah, you had a plate of food or what? <laughs> I, went to, I went to college yeah. and then moving outside of Sacramento mm-hmm. and I was like, oh shit, it's different out here. Mm-hmm. People feel a certain way and that's when the words started disappearing because right. like, what am I going to argue here? You know what I mean? Right, right, There's right, no right. point in arguing this. You just got to let it go. It it is what it is. What is the filler word of everybody else? I know Mexican people is foo. That's like their period. Foo. Yeah, 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 hey, yeah, foo. Yeah, yeah. What's up, hey, foo? Hey, foo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's definitely one. It's just like 
There Do is, you have it in your language? No, nah, dog. There's nothing in your language you guys say to each other that's... No, nah, we got none of that shit. Uh, mm. But Asian people love black culture, though. Yeah, yeah. So, like, oh, for sure. Yeah, we fucking love black yeah, culture. Yeah. Look at all of our music. Look at the way we dress, everything. We love black culture. So it's like, mm -hmm. I like I remember the first time where, like, it slipped out. It was at a, at a stand-up comedy show. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. And then, you know... At the time, it was still somewhat acceptable, not really. Mm -hmm. and the whole crowd went fucking silent. What, what year is this about? This was like, how old? I was like 22. Okay. So, so that was like, what? That was 13 years ago. Okay, yeah. So 12, around that 12. time, yeah, around that time or some shit like yeah. that, uh, we were, I said it in a sentence, it slipped out, mm -hmm. and the whole crowd went silent. Lucky, one of my comic buddies went mm -hmm. out there. He's a black dude. He was like, "Hey, you good?" <laughs> Stayed the whole set. Everybody started laughing. Oh, beautiful! And then okay, it kind of rolled out. Good, good. But that's when I realized, like, oh, this shit's dead for me. Yeah, like, it's yeah, just yeah. not gonna happen. Because no. even when people did stand up now, back in the day, like, I could say it, and then mm -hmm. it made sense within the context. Right. So it was just like that was like the huge departure. Was it a part of the joke, or was it uh, just a as a throwaway statement? It was a throwaway thing. Okay, okay. It kind of came out casually because because I feel like if you're anything else. It would have to be a part of the joke now, kind of. Yeah, I guess so. But if, like, if you it, do it, like, it's hard. Like Louis C.K. Yeah, but probably has the, one of the most funny nigga jokes I've ever heard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was really good. It's just really well done. So I feel like if if it's in that context, maybe you can get away with it. I, but today, I don't know if. You can get yeah, it. I just don't even want to yeah, play yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, might as well. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not promoting what other people say, but, but you know, well, I'm just. I, I comedians. Jumped, well, I jumped ahead of this because everybody was on that cancel, cancel culture tip, right? Right, right. And especially during BLM time, and I yeah. said, I was like, bro, I said that shit majority of my fucking life, right? If you go back in time enough, you're mm -hmm. gonna hear it, right? Right. But I'm not gonna shy away from it. Right. Whatever was then is different from what it is now, mm -hmm. and that's all that you have to know yeah, yeah, right yeah. and a lot of people from the outside looking in they would have a problem with it for the people who are on the inside they never did yeah, right. they're just like oh you used to say it, it is what it is yeah. everybody did and then we just moved on <laughs> <laughs> right 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 you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. I... and look i'm not saying every now and then i don't say it right. now <laughs> all right sometimes as soon as i walked in here sometimes, sometimes i walked in, I was like, What's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's hilarious. it's just one of the most you guys have to understand during during that time of the late 90s early 2000s mm -hmm. it was just it was the descriptor for joy mm -hmm. happiness stupidity right. and like there are times where i'm just like god, god you made me the wrong race <laughs> Why'd you have me grow up in a black neighborhood? <laughs> Fuck! Oh, man. When you start calling your, your kids that, 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 that we might revisit this. Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys didn't grow up where I did, so you, right. you're not allowed for this type of shit. <laughs> you little niggas. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Like, it's so weird when some, when another friend points it out. Yeah, goes, yeah, yeah. You don't say it anymore. Right? And I'm like, yeah, it's just... Why? Right, right, right. <laughs> There's no point. What am I fighting for here? Do they still say it? Well, there's, he's black. He can say oh, it. Oh, yeah, he he's wants. Black. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's funny. <laughs> yeah. He's just the one that noticed it the most. Right, it's right. It's just like, oh, what the fuck? Is there any other culture that has a word that we would think is cool to take like that? I don't think so, man. Like, I, I feel there's like... no other, like... I feel like black people are the best at, it's like the whole thing of turning uh, lemons into lemonade. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, absolutely. you got to even think about it from like a, I love food, like culinary right. aspect, right? Yes. What the fuck is barbecue? That's all slave shit. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know absolutely. I mean? You took all these fucking meats that nobody fucking wanted. Well, right. You smoke it for a long time and it yeah. becomes delicious. Yeah. That, right? Even the ideas of chitlins, as yeah. much as I, I don't fuck with it, but I understand like where it came from, what they did with Slang. it. Slang. Right? pop culture all, all this that. type of shit everything was considered what if you if you spoke this way listened to this type of music you were a lower right. class person right everybody listens to hip hop now yeah and it's just that thing and it's become much worse <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be honest <laughs> Is it better now? I don't know. I don't know if that's better You guys let too many people Everybody in. <laughs> and everybody's making it. It's just like, oh. Uh. The problem is you let too many people in. Right, right. There was no right. regulation. You know what if I'm saying? I, I'll say, kick some of these niggas out. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, and there was like this other side too. Like I remember like now kids on TikTok are complaining, like young black kids, mm -hmm. where if they don't listen to hip hop or maybe they're like, oh, you're not black. And they're yeah, like, who the, the fuck crazy. are you to tell me who I'm, if crazy. I'm black or not? You yeah, know what I mean? Crazy. It's like, it's, it's not a monolith. We have all these like different cultures. Mm -hmm. Like just because I don't say this word or I don't listen to this music, right. when I walk out this door, I'm still a fucking black kid. So right, what the right, fuck right, are you right. talking about? It's just weird. The internet has made things so fucking weird. So strange, man. We need the aliens to come. Oh, I'm the pretty aliens. sure they're already looking at us just waiting for us to get destroyed. Yeah, either they're waiting to destroy, to destroy us or to 
they're gonna laugh at us. Some something's gonna happen. A hundred percent, man. But yeah. yeah, I just like it's just one of those weird things where I, I remember just jumping ahead of it just because like ain't nobody canceling yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like I grew up in South Sacramento. Smart man. Everybody said that shit. <laughs> I already yeah. told it. You go back far enough. Yeah, it's in there. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? You connect it to You'll it. You'll find it. It is what it is. Yeah, man. And and that's good. I I I really appreciate when people just keep their history real, especially if you've grown and changed. Okay? Yeah. You, you know, that's just a part of the story. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? So keep that out there. It's funny to look no, I You know what's so funny? Like years ago, it was like six, six, six or seven years ago now, next to my parents' store, so we own a black beauty supply store. Mm-hmm. That's why I use the word mm-hmm. so much. And I went to a black church. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's just integrated. <laughs> There's a store. <laughs> my whole life, I thought the store was called Punjab's. It's just called liquor store. <laughs> and I remember I went back to my parents' store. Yeah. And, you know, the people on the block are like, you about to stop by Punjabs? I'm like, yeah, of course. And I was like, I went by, I was like, what's up? And the guy even calls the store Punjabs. But that's only because everybody else was calling him a Punjab. Punjab. And so uh, you'll walk is... in. And I remember it was like six, seven years ago. I'm visiting my parents. I stop. I look at the store sign. I'm like, it doesn't say Punjabs. I've been calling this place Punjab <laughs> since I was a kid. Yeah. And it's just called Liquor Store. That's crazy. Yeah. And I didn't fucking know. And I remember I asked the dude, I was like, you like being called Punjab? He's like, whatever. <laughs> you know, he, doesn't, he doesn't give a fuck. There's a generation of people, money. Just, they don't care. They're yeah. like, it's, they, nobody's saying anything bad about me. Oh, yeah. It's oh, just, yeah. It is what it is. There's this person in my parents' store till this day called my mom Mrs. Kim. Her name's not Mrs. Kim. Dog, that is fantastic. <laughs> she goes, hey, Mama Kim. And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> you know, she that ain't trying to be rude. Hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Why, why even change it? She's been it? calling my mom, you know, Mrs. Kim, Mama Kim for fucking 20 years. <laughs> that whatever. is hilarious. Yeah. And then I appreciate that, though. I appreciate because who gives a fuck? Who the man? fuck cares? She who comes gives in. A fuck? We smile. We hug. We see each other. I've known her since yeah, I was a little man. kid. It's what Good person, you're a good person. Hey, yeah. little things don't matter. I did tell her that her name isn't Mrs. Kim. Her name is Sang, and it blew her mind. <laughs> <laughs> she was shook. She it said, did. what? Oh. Wait, your name's not Kim? Oh, my God. Right? She goes, God. why you let me call you Kim this whole time? And she was like, whatever. <laughs> she was like, I'm, I'm sorry. I was like, you don't need to apologize. I'm just saying that's just was what it is. It's like, Next time she come in, hey, Miss Kim. <laughs> she still does. It doesn't fucking matter. And I'm not going to change that out of a 70-year-old yeah. woman. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Of course. She's 70 years old. She's been coming to my parents' store for fucking... Since I was a little kid, yeah. it is what it is. Like I don't. Some people t- need to learn to be a little more forgiving of s- stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like, why ruin the Take community and the relationship over something this small? It wasn't racial. It wasn't anything else. At the time, times were different, and right. it was probably eat- my mom couldn't speak English, yeah, so yeah. she just told her, "Hey, whatever, Kim." And then she was like, "Hi, Mrs. Kim," and then we just left it at that. Right, right. You know what I mean? So she. As long as you're getting treated well. I was huh? baby Kim. Right. Damn, baby Kim. <laughs> He's like, damn, baby Kim, you got big. Uh, like, that could have gone wrong. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> little Kim? Like, right. Different, different. Very, right, yeah, yeah, different little Kim. Very, those are your people. That's yeah, not my yeah, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, guys, oh, yeah. that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. I had a whole bunch of topics. I threw that all out. Yeah, it doesn't fucking matter. We have great conversations. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, Genius Brain, every Sunday's at 12 p.m. Check out Secret Society, S-C-R-T-S-O-C-I-E-T-Y dot com. A lot of the stuff has been sold out, but the stuff that's still there, go ahead and cop that. Jumbi Matcha, if you want it in your store. I think we're total next year. We might even have 13 stores. Ooh, so wow. if you guys want it in your city, franchise, we're, we're, we're a franchise, but we, you know, we keep it small and in the family, and everybody has been super successful successful who have opened the store so if you want to be a part of that family let us know and then you could check out uh the comedy trap house comedy trap house you know, dorm tainment dorm tainment sketches if you want to check that out mm-hmm. and uh yeah your personal plug though at emmanuel richards find me anywhere uh on uh fridays at seven on comedy trap house i have a show called mayhem hour check check that out we talk about conspiracies and all the wild shit some of these uh Girls talking about they want a seven hundred thousand dollar man. I still don't understand that yeah, shit. Yeah, uh, all that. So yeah, thanks. But uh, Genius Brain every Sunday is at twelve p.m. We'll see y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>